Today, we're going to walk through using the Next.js template for server stack and how we can use JetBrains Rider to get the best possible developer experience. Next.js is a flexible front-end framework built on top of React that can also be used for static site generation or SSG. This low configuration framework is a great option for building content heavy websites that follow the Jamstack architecture of cleanly separating your HTTP API from your front end. Jamstack is a broad type of architecture that separates JavaScript, API, and markup. That is, it promotes statically generating your markup, enhancing your site or application with JavaScript, and using well defined HTTP APIs for backend operations. This clean decoupling allows for greater portability and flexibility, and that's something that ServiceStack supports by ensuring that the APIs you build are always well-defined and interoperable thanks to its message-centric design. To get started with this template, we'll want to have a few things installed. The .NET 6 SDK, Node 16 with NPM, and the ServiceStack.NET X tool. If you don't have the X tool installed, you can install it using the command .NET tool install -gx. For this demo, we are going to be using JetBrains Rider as it has great support for React and .NET development in one IDE, but the template doesn't require it. To create a new project using the Next.js template, we're going to use the command x new space Next.js space Next app where Next.js is the template name and Next app is the name of our project. Alternatively, you can use the jamstacks.net website, provide a name, and click on the Next.js option to download a zipped templated project. Opening the new Next app solution file with Rider, we'll see the four c -sharp projects of our ServiceStack API backend, but not our Next.js application. Since we want to easily work on both from the one IDE, we will want an easy way to navigate both our API projects and the Next.js UI project. Rider lets us do this by attaching our UI folder to our .NET solution. This can be done by right clicking on the solution name and selecting add attach existing folder, choosing the UI folder from the root of our newly created Next app project. This gives us a clear view of the four .NET projects of our ServiceStack API backend, along with the UI folder for developing our Next.js frontend. Opening the package.json file in the UI folder, we will see a series of scripts that we can use to automate some common tasks. For example, to take advantage of Next.js's fast refresh support, we can simply run the dev task right from the package.json file. Using this dev npm script, it will watch the UI folder for any changes and refresh our browser for immediate feedback. So that our Next.js app can communicate with our backend, we will want to run our ServiceStack API project locally, and we can do this quickly using Rider. Rider automatically detects the .NET project's launch settings.json and populates a run configuration for the app host so we can quickly run or debug without any additional config. With both of those run configs running, we have a Next.js dev process running on localhost 3000 and our ServiceStack API on localhost 5001. Every change to a file in the UI folder will automatically refresh our browser, enabling a rapid iteration cycle when making front-end changes. If you prefer the command line rather than writer run configs, a similar great workflow can be achieved by running multiple terminals from within Rider itself. Here we can see running .NET Watch and npm run dev in two separate terminal windows, enabling us to make backend or frontend changes as needed with a quick iteration cycle. Since this Next.js template is using Tailwind for CSS, we'll want to do one more thing to make styling our Next.js application even easier. Rider has an optional plugin for Tailwind providing intelligent support for Tailwind CSS and autocomplete from within JSX components. Open up the plugin menu from settings or a quick search and search for Tailwind on the plugin marketplace. Once the plugin is installed, let's make a small style change for the background to a pastel green. Here we can see our changes instantly reflected in our browser thanks to Next.js's fast refresh. 
Now we will jump to our backend and change the hello service to provide a friendly suffix. Thanks to .NET 6 hot reload combined with Next.js fast refresh, this is instantly usable from our Next.js application. The Jamstack templates also come with a bookings and to-do example to show you how you can create UIs and integrate services in a productive way. Links to related code can be found at the bottom of each page and more information about the templates can be found in the features and blog link in the navigation. Now that we've made the changes we want, we can prepare our Next.js application for deployment using the npm publish script. This will statically generate our Next.js application using the next export command and output the results to our www root directory in our API app host project. This gives us the option to host both our Next.js app and the API in the same .NET host. But for best results, we recommend shipping the www root folder to a CDN or content delivery network. This leverages the flexibility of the Jamstack architecture since our UI is static HTML with JavaScript only for enhancements and interactivity. CDN providers have nodes duplicate the static content geographically, meaning page load times will be optimized globally to be fast regardless of the user's location. This also means your API server is only doing the dynamic work it is absolutely required to do, enabling higher scalability for lower costs. Additionally, search engine optimization or SEO will also perform well by default since no JavaScript is needed to get access to the content used by search engine crawlers. The template comes with built-in GitHub Action templates that can build and deploy your UI to GitHub pages and your API to any Linux hosts with Docker Compose via SSH. This is what we do at ServiceStack to host our template demos including Jamstack templates with DigitalOcean and it costs us just 40 cents per month per template with a dedicated container running an API for each of our templates. For more details on this deployment pattern, check out the deployment with GitHub Actions post that is featured in the template itself. This can be found under the blog section where the write-ups for this tutorial and others are available including using this template with Visual Studio. Well that's it for this video, I hope it's been useful, and if you have any feedback or suggestions for any of our templates, let us know in the comments. You can also join the community in our GitHub discussion and Discord, the links are in the description. And as always, thanks for watching.